Welcome to our Lenten worship. We are so glad to have you join us today. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please turn to page two of the Hold and Evening Prayer booklet. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter darkness. sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer from the Small Catechism. And lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? God tempts no one to sin, but we ask in this prayer that God would watch over us and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful self may not deceive us and draw us into false belief, despair, and other great and shameful sins. And we pray that even though we are so tempted, we may still win the final victory. Our second reading is the seventh petition of the Lord's Prayer from the Small Catechism. 
but deliver us from evil. What does this mean? We ask in this inclusive prayer that our Heavenly Father would save us from every evil to body and soul, and at our last hour would mercifully take us from the troubles of this world to himself in heaven. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One key to great plays in football or basketball is the fake. Making it seem like you're going to do one thing when actually you plan to do something else. Pretend to pass and then sink a basket instead. When it works, a fake throws the defense off guard, exploiting weaknesses that enable the offense to score or to move closer to it. Now, there's nothing fake about temptations. They are terribly real, but they can be terribly deceptive also. The less dangerous ones, temptation to curse, lie, lust, or steal can look very powerful. And the most dangerous temptations, like false belief and despair, can look weak and harmless. While you're setting up your defense against those smaller temptations that you can see, the more dangerous ones come along and blindside you from the other direction robbing you of the freedom and the hope of God's promise. Now, something strange happens as God is making you a new creature. You might expect that as a new creature, you'd get stronger and stronger until you wouldn't be tempted at all. That is partially true. As a new creature, you do get stronger in God's promise, but regarding temptation, it's just the opposite. The more you hear and want God's promise, the stronger the temptations get. It's like learning to drive. The more you learn, the more aware you become of the dangers. And in addition, being in God's word paints a great big bullseye for the devil on your forehead you become a great target. So big temptations work this way. They're sneaky, silent, and deadly. Their target is the first commandment, God's promise that he will be our God. Two of the biggest temptations, as mentioned in Luther's explanation, are false belief and despair. Now, false belief might not seem like much of a temptation, not nearly as tempting as it is to gossip or to covet. What does it matter what people believe after all, right? We live in a free country, don't we? You've heard this. And that is the fake. False belief looks harmless at first. But what is false belief? Since God's decision to be our God in Christ, forgiving and adopting us is the most important belief we have. False belief is anything that denies, that undermines this promise. False beliefs say in one way or another that God's decision for you isn't enough or good enough. For us. So either those who spout false beliefs say that we ourselves have to do 
what God has promised to do, or they say that God goes part of the way, and then in response, we must go the rest of the way under our own steam. The God of the promise is then treated like a liar. And then you lose the freedom, the hope, and the great comfort of God's promise. Now put that way, it might not seem all that tempting, but our old creature phrases it much more enticingly. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere, our old creature will say, as if God had never spoken a word and we can make up anything that we want about God. If that doesn't work, the old creature will flip the coin So it comes down on the other side, making the promise into a law. Now you have to believe this, it will say, and believe it just as I tell it to you, otherwise there's no hope for you. Our old creature makes God's word out to be something so stupid that we have to be forced to accept it. Either way, again, the hope, joy, and comfort of the promise is denied. The second powerful temptation that Luther mentions in the sixth petition is despair. Our opponents, the devil, the world, and our sinful selves, though controlled by God, can still do enough damage to make us feel helpless and hopeless. What makes despair such a sneaky temptation is that it begins so quietly. That's also what makes it so difficult to fight. Like worries and guilt, hopelessness feeds on itself, spiraling us down into despair until finally there seems to be no way out. And then, Fight as we may, God's word and promise don't seem true or helpful for us. The hope, comfort, and joy God promises us in his word are lost for us, buried by the old creature's hopelessness. And so we pray, deliver us from temptation, asking that God will guard us from being lured into such things as false belief and despair. When we pray this petition, we're asking God to protect us now and forever from anything that would lead us away from God and his promise for us. As you and I await the new day, God doesn't take us out of temptation, making us somehow immune to it or exempt from it. Instead, God gives us grace upon grace, gifts upon gifts, enabling us to live in temptation with faith and hope. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. It is the grace of God's promise to be your God, God's decision to make you his new creature who will be what God created you to be, a believer. It is the grace of God's promise to take you just as you are, putting your old creature to death and promising to raise you up as a new creature day after day to live with Christ forever. It's the grace that comes to you in the word and sacraments, assuring you and reassuring you that whatever happens, Christ is yours and you are Christ's. That is exactly how Jesus fought the tempter, with God's word and promise of grace. After his baptism, when Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted, He didn't rely on his own strength or power, as he very well could have. Instead, each time the devil confronted him, Jesus countered him 
with God's word. It is written, Jesus said, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. His word is the power that God gives us in our weakness. We will be tempted right up until we breathe our last breath. And if it weren't for God's promise of grace, we would be beaten by temptations up until our last breath also. But God has filled our ears with his beautiful word, forgiving us, comforting us, encouraging us, and sustaining us. God's word is God's power, the power of the Holy Spirit to uphold us in our weakness, to overcome all the temptations that we face, and to win the final victory for us. But that's not the end of the story. At our last hour, when the last day finally arrives, God is going to deliver us from all evil. Anything and everything that threatens us in any way. God is going to destroy all the old enemies, our old sinful self, the rebellious wor world, and the devil, making us and the creation completely new. And who is it that's going to do this? Your creator, the one who in Christ has taught you this beautiful prayer, the Lord's Prayer. For this God is the God of the promise, the God who raised Jesus from the dead, the God who will raise you from the dead also. See, I'm making all things new, God says. Amen, we say, this is most certainly true. Child and his name shall be Jesus. 
remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all, your, all joy and peace in believing, so that you abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, Christ has made you free. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Out of the Depths I Cry, which is on page 295 of the Lutheran Book of Worship. <laughs> Wednesday night Lenten service, I invite you with me uh, to give thanks to God for our confirmation students who have led us through worship this Lenten season. They've done a fine job. 